Sony's PlayStation 3 has a long and tried history in video games. From an awful announcement and launch to a slow and steady rehabilitation process, the PS3 eventually redeemed itself and has since become a beloved machine to many. The first truly internet-connected PlayStation with an online store, friends list, and messaging. High-capacity Blu-ray discs for storing massive games or watching HD movies. And above all else, a suite of exclusives which elevated PlayStation's reputation far and beyond what anyone would have ever expected. Let's take a look at over 50 quick-fire facts about the PlayStation 3. The PS3 is well known for its complicated cell processor, and even more well known for its high price at launch, but initially Sony's plans was to put the cell processor in multiple Sony products in order to bring the cost down quicker. Ultimately, no other Sony division wanted to use cell due to the resulting high price, and thus PS3 was the only Sony product to utilize the chip. The father of PlayStation, Ken Kuragi, left Sony shortly after the PS3 released. While many think it was due to the PS3's initial failure, it was actually planned all along. Right before the PS3 was ready to ship, he was asked what his plans were for PS4, as he traditionally began his work right away on the next console. His response, PlayStation 4 is not my responsibility. Kudaragi's main vision for the PS3 was that it wasn't a games console at all, but rather a supercomputer capable of doing anything and everything that you'd ever need it to do. The PS3 was originally revealed to feature two HDMI ports, three Ethernet ports, and a whopping six USB ports. This, however, was scaled back to reduce costs. Despite efforts from Sony to bring the PS3 costs down, the system was still sold at a loss when it came out. Now, this is typical with video game consoles, but Sony was taking a much more substantial loss as it cost over $800 to manufacture one system. Securing a PS3 at launch in the US was borderline dangerous as a number of violent crimes occurred. Campers were held at gunpoint, there were multiple stampedes, and even an instance of a man getting shot. I need the first 34 divisions to sign up behind that camera right there. Take these people in Fresno, California. Hundreds lined up for the chance to buy only 34 PlayStations delivered to this store. A recipe for disaster right from the get-go. The PS3 was highly sought after not to play, but more so to sell. Typically console launches did well on eBay, but PS3s were going for well over three times their original price, putting most winning auctions at over $1,500 to $2,000. During launch, one long-forgotten peripheral was the memory card reader. This was used so one could transfer their PS1 and PS2 save files over to the PS3 and continue playing their games with backwards compatibility. The PS3's first official controller, 6-axis, was meant to have rumble functionality from the very beginning, but due to an ongoing legal battle with the company Immersion, Sony was forced to remove the haptic feedback from the controller. It wouldn't return until 2008 with the DualShock 3. Because of the legal battle, Sony tried to downplay Rumble by not only saying the feature would interfere with motion sensing technology, but going as far to say that Rumble was considered last generation technology. The PS3 supported up to seven wireless controllers at once. There are even a few games that support all seven via local multiplayer. Early on, multiple PS3s were used for high performance supercomputing. Systems could be clustered together to perform advanced calculations and processes extremely fast. One example is the Air Force Research Laboratory, which in 2010 used 1,760 PS3s to build a very powerful supercomputer. PS3's power was found to be very suitable for the Folding at Home program, a project which allows people to volunteer their systems for protein folding. The computational power is then used for medical research. Folding at Home was available on PS3 from 2007 to 2012 and was a huge game changer for the research as gamers contributed over 100 million hours of computing. Before its time, PS3 was not only the best Blu-ray player, but the cheapest too. Despite its initial high price of $4.99 to $5.99, dedicated Blu-ray players were selling for nearly $1,000, making PS3 a bargain. In 2008, Toshiba announced the discontinuation of HD DVD, Blu-ray's biggest competitor. Sony and their decision to include a Blu-ray drive into every PS3 are largely credited with being one of the main reasons for beating HD DVD in the format war. At launch, the PS3 was pretty bare bones in terms of features and functionality. The first PlayStation Store was actually a very simple web browser, and games could not be downloaded in the background. If you wanted to grab a demo or download a game, you had to sit there and wait until it was finished. Canceling the download would mean starting it back from the beginning. Only the original launch 20 and 60GB PS3s featured hardware-based PS2 backwards compatibility. The subsequent 60 and 80GB models that followed that used software emulation for PS2, which left certain games unsupported or potentially having poor performance. 
Many remember Linux being available for the PS3 before Sony removed it and subsequently got sued, but less seem to realize that the PS3 using the regular XMB still functions like a PC. The system supports mouse and keyboard, both wired and wireless. The web browser can actually download files right to the hard drive, which can then be played back no problem. You can even set up a media server and access more of your content through your PC. PS3 exclusive Warhawk, originally released in 2007, is one of the first console games to come out both physically and digitally on the same day. One of the most unique games out there is PS3 exclusive Eye of Judgment. This was an original card game that utilized the PlayStation Eye camera to read cards and then display them on screen. This was, and still is, about as close as it gets to a real-life Yu-Gi-Oh! PlayStation Home, Sony's virtual world that lived on the PS3, was seen by many as a failure. But the service was actually extremely profitable. Many developers made over seven figures developing cosmetic items for the service. In 2009, Sony released the redesigned PS3 Slim. But it's worth mentioning that technically Sony does not call it PS3 Slim, they just call it PS3. The Slim name is simply nomenclature from fans to easily differentiate the models. To coincide with 3D support for PS3, Sony released a 24-inch PlayStation-branded 3D TV. The TV featured a technology Sony called SimulView, which allowed two-player games to have their own screen when being played by using the 3D effects and glasses. Up until the company finally started turning a profit in gaming, the PS3 lost Sony close to $4.7 billion. In 2011, the PlayStation Network was hacked which brought down the service for 21 days. Now, while the culprits were never discovered, the vulnerability that led to PSN's downfall was actually known by Sony, and they admitted it. Remote play allowed the PS3 screen to be displayed on a PSP, and while this was extremely impressive for its time, you could only use the XMB, except some downloadable PSN games were supported, and the full retail game layer could also be played. If you had a PlayStation Eye, you could create a chat room with yourself and see your video feed. With this in mind, you could then use a PSP with remote play, and now you have a very simple security camera for your room. The PS3 cell was criticized publicly a number of times from developers. Gabe Newell of Valve was particularly harsh, stating, The PS3 is a total disaster on so many levels. I think it's really clear Sony lost track of what customers and what developers wanted. They're not making my life easier. Like the PlayStation 3 makes my life as a software developer much harder. All of a sudden I'm supposed to figure out how to have this asymmetrical, multi-threaded game, <laughs> right? And I've never written a single line of multi-threaded code ever, right? It's not like I was like lying awake saying, I need to re-architect every line of code I've ever written in order to get it to work. However, in 2010, Gabe Newell appeared at Sony's E3 press conference, not only rescinding his comments, but vouching to develop on the platform and promising Portal 2 on PS3 will be the best console version. At one point, Activision CEO Bobby Kotick made light threats to Sony regarding PS3 sales and high development costs, saying that if something doesn't change, Activision may have to pull support. Sony's successful ad campaign featuring fake PlayStation executive Kevin Butler was all well and good until the actor who plays Kevin, Jerry Lambert, appeared in a Bridgestone Tire commercial where a Nintendo Wii was being played. Sony sued Jerry claiming he was harming the brand and confusing customers. His character hasn't been used in marketing since. One of the first PS3 tech demos featured a bunch of rubber ducks falling into a bathtub. This eventually turned into a full game called Super Rub-A-Dub. In 2009, one company was selling a PlayStation 3 reformed in 1,600 grams of 22 karat gold for a cool $319,000. Only three were made. During PlayStation Move's development, it was originally going to be called PlayStation Arc. A trademark was even filed in Japan, but apparently Sony changed their minds at the last minute as they didn't want to infringe on a Microsoft patent for Arc-branded PC accessories. When PlayStation Move came out in 2010, Sony started to use the controller internally to mount on a headset for the earliest versions of what would become PlayStation VR. They even tested it with a modified section of God of War 3. Initially, when Netflix came to PS3, it wasn't allowed to be an application on the XMB due to Netflix's partnership with Microsoft on the Xbox 360. So to get around it, you can insert a Netflix disc into your PS3 to access the streaming content until the exclusivity clause with Microsoft was over. On March 1st, 2010, original fat PS3 models experienced a bug with the internal clock. Users couldn't log in, play games offline, or change themes. The console's clock would go back to December 31st, 1999, and display an error code. The PS3 was region-free and could play games from any country no problem, but you could also create another account and select whatever country you want to see the respective PlayStation Store. And if you could properly pay or fund the account, you could download foreign content easily as well. Both Slim variations of the PS3 were leaked prior to their release. The PS3 Slim in particular had a number of photos released that showed the console clear as day. 
Speaking of leaks, Sony's own digital magazine, Core, which was for the PlayStation 3, actually leaked the PSP Go prior to its reveal at E3. Once the PS4 came out, the DualShock 4 controller was able to be used on a PS3 via a USB cable. A later firmware update allowed the controller to be used wirelessly as well. Despite the Xbox 360 having a year head start on the market, and starting at a lower price, Sony finally caught up to Xbox 360 sales and PS3 officially outsold its closest competitor in May of 2013. One of the rarest PS3 games available is the Uncharted 2 Fortune Hunter Collector's Edition, featuring a replica Perba Dagger. Only 200 of these were made, and listings can go anywhere from $3,000 to $15,000. While not as rare, but still highly sought after, is the Last of Us Post-Pandemic Edition, which includes a statue of Joel and Ellie. A complete set can go for $1,500, while the statue alone is worth $800. Changing your PSN ID was impossible for all of the PS3 generation, but early on, Japanese accounts were allowed to change the displayed ID, so while you'd still need to type in the correct name for adding or messaging, what was displayed could be changed. PS3's cell processor took years for developers to master. Sony Worldwide Studio Naughty Dog claims the first Uncharted game released in 2007 was at 30% efficiency with the hardware, up until 2013 where they maxed out the PS3's power with The Last of Us. Sony officially discontinued all shipments of PS3 by May 2017, meaning the console was on the market and supported for over 10 years. Even though the PS3 from the very beginning was always marketed as an HD console for games and movies, the console never included an HDMI cable in the 10 years it was on the market. While PS4 is the latest console in Sony's lineup, PS3 is still considered the better media hub and management system. It's even required if you want to download and transfer PSP or PS Vita content to their respective platforms if you don't want to use a computer. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim might be familiar to PS3 owners. This version had a number of issues, but it was due to the PS3's memory. Because of the nature of the game and how it can be played, some players could run up the PS3's memory and thus the game could encounter issues with the save files or potentially crash. Near the end of the PS3's life cycle and the launch of PS4 in 2013, it was revealed that PlayStation users take up the most traffic of game console usage on none other than Hornhub.com, with mostly PS3s and some PS4s accounting for 55%. The highest search term for PS3? MILF. Honestly, I couldn't be more proud of the PlayStation community. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've loved making it. I, honestly, every single time I do a video on the PS3 really takes me back. I played so much PlayStation 3 and, you know, I played a lot of PS1 and PS2, but PS3 is a bit more unique in the sense that it had that friends list, the, the online games, the trophies, so it's a bit more involved and it did have a very unique history. So uh, I hope you found something pretty interesting out of all these facts. I certainly enjoyed that last one. And uh, hey, if you have not yet, of course, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news reviews and updates that are here on YouTube. That is it for me in this video. I'll see you all in the next one. You take it easy.